number three. An elimination match, best of three series. Is determine who's going to be heading to the finals of the PGL North American Qualifier. Where, where you at, Grant? Five seconds remaining. <laughs> <laughs> Great intro, Grant. DC's turn to ban. You just can't get enough Dota, can you? You you went straight from King's Cup to immediately asking if I wanted a a, a stats man last night, which I missed. Ten seconds remain. Thank you, Grant. Why you gotta be like that? You didn't even invite me to hang out. You were here for two weeks. It's the same thing with Grant every single time. You can't take those off-the-cuff compliments from him ever. It's yeah, always it's, it's gonna right. be followed up by a psych. It's all right. That's what we love him for. DC's turn to pit. I speak for the trees. Flada. <laughs> <laughs> of course i mean that'd be pretty hype right questions of the world. found the most important i'll have to hit up oh that's some good taste man those scoops are something else grant since you're the uh the na historian dota you were listening to the that's what i want to all right cool Oh, yeah, I died the same way. DC's turn to bed. We're all arrogant, egotistical fucks and can't stand listening to. Ten seconds remaining. Actually, they did run Jakiro in the first game, remaining. but then, but then they lost. <laughs> so maybe they just need a, a winning Jakiro. But I mean, truly, nature's. I mean, I don't know how you guys feel about it, but I feel like Nature's Prophet is like arguably the most OP offlaner of the patch right now. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. DC's turn to ban. A lot of help with the uh, the Slardar, whether or not Slardar is going to be rotating for the Nature's Prophet at all in the, the early laning phase is yet to be determined. But when we go into the mid game, it'll definitely help out a lot to have. You know, Nature's Prophet, like, I definitely agree with you. He is pretty OP, but a lot of other, I mean, not a lot of other regions, but Team Secret, they have some of the best answers for a Nature's Prophet, in my opinion. The moment they see that hero, they will pick up Spirit Breaker along with something like, I don't know, a Bad Rider or eventually a Storm. They always have like two heroes who can easily catch out a Nature's Prophet. Dire team pick. Oracle. Oh, why do they have an Oracle? We, we've seen Oracle picked up against Batrider, and we've seen it picked up against Darkseer. But we don't have either one of those heroes yet on them. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Do you like those, those kind of drafting decisions, though? Do you like preemptive pickups?
DC's turn to pick mm, mortals. Hard for me. Oh, Monkey King. Potential Monkey King safe lane here. I don't know how that hero actually does against the, the Furion. Do you? Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. <laughs> I can feel that, especially once he gets like level three, and he, if he wants to, he's able to jump into trees and have that extra mobility to really keep up with the Fury on. Is, is the matchup what? actually that bad? Dire team pick. Yeah, that's definitely true. Uh, some of the European regions, they run him in the mid lane to counter out some of the more popular mid laners, actually. Ten seconds remaining. I think they run it against Pugna, actually, and it's actually okay against Pugna, too. Five seconds remaining. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, hold up. Are you mixing me up with someone? I have done nothing but EU and yeah. CIS. He definitely. Oh, I got you. I got you. <laughs> Grand, apparently. DCs yes. Turn to ban. Blood seeker. I mean, they got the, the synergy with the Oracle and the Sword. So uh, I feel like Digital Chaos are going to take this pretty fast pace where there's there's actually a lot of synergy with all three of their We've got Oracle seconds. save on Death Prophet, which is really strong because you've got two different heals. Five you've got uh, physical minutes. damage amplifier and Slardar. And you've got in the laning phase, it's going to be very tough because Spirit Siphon, then you have a Furion TPing in behind you, potentially with like with an Orb of Venom and stuff. Like you lose that mid hero, say like a level four Furion comes in and like, you lose that mid hero, he's going to push your tower immediately with the death profit. And you could just start losing towers just like that. I, I feel like digital chaos is really trying to take the laning phase and some of the options away from immortals and, and just start the ball rolling in their favor. Kind of like they did in. Dire team ban. Yeah, I, I don't think there's... An, do you think there's enough on DC to actually address this Monkey King, though? A lot of the times, it... Not a problem? Oh, okay. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. of team fights you just throw a couple nukes at him and you're able to reaper scythe him stop that the power of that big ultimate it would give you another synergy with the oracle like how, how has necrophos just gone untouched through this whole drafting phase yeah it was i don't remember the bans but that is a good point i'm really surprised that we're at the very last pick phase and no one has banned or touched it Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds I mean, remaining. 
Chen Apparition got banned in the first one too, then that's... I Yo, how, how how good is... It doesn't have the greatest, like, it's not the greatest pickup against these heroes. But what what about Huskar? It's a little risky, right? I think Huskar does pretty poorly against a Bloodseeker as well. There's always a long... Well, it, it, it's like you always have a long startup on your jump. The potential for you to get ruptured while you're jumping is really high. And you can pretty much die to it. There's... Oh, there we go. Uh, it was like, I could, really couldn't think of any heroes that are good against Bloodseeker that were left, but Weaver with the Lincolns, definitely relatively strong versus this lineup from No, it was, it was close. very back and forth. Grant, you were there casting the, the King's Cup and Digital Chaos's uh, definite fall from grace there, getting 3 0'd by the Dire. Was there something like that really stood out to you about DC that they really need to improve upon? Or was it kind of alluding back to what you were saying about Moon Man, or feel like the captaining wasn't quite there yet? Yeah, either one. Prepare for battle. I say facet. What? <laughs> wow. That's pretty high. Why, why, why are they all wishing uh, luck to Ferev? I don't I know. I love Ferev just as much as the next. I mean, why not? Ferev is one of the friendliest... Korean uh, players, in my opinion. Rev got me my 7K. Yeah, I see it. We see it. Hi. Stats work. Thick. Oh, Stats, Dubu? man, Grant. Dubu's going to be the first one down, it looks like. Is there going to be easily picking up that first blood? Digital Chaos. Already one step ahead in this game. 30 seconds to battle. Yeah, pretty insane, but Weaver's pretty good against him, right? Because he's got slow attack speed, so the bugs are just able to work on that. The battle begins. But it looks like they're also not just going to be given up for split, but also the bounty runes. Three of them go the way of uh, Digital Chaos. It looks like Bulba is not going to be giving that signature babysit for Abed in the mid lane. Uh, he's actually going to be stepping on MSS's lane first. Kind of makes sense. I don't think Death Prophet really needs it, to be honest. Very signature solo mid hero. You might be speaking too soon. <laughs> or apparently not. <laughs> of course Bulba is not going to go anywhere but mid in the beginning of the game. Oh, wait, the Korean? Oh! So close, not going to be able to get it. MP is going to pay for that body block, taking about half his age. Saves his courier. Not getting what you came for. Oh, wait, he's got to be careful. No more spirit siphon. Yeah, 
yeah, it's the equivalent of like Winter Wyvern bodying an offlaner out of the lane, you know? You feel great, and then all of a sudden that guy comes back with one tango, and you can't fight him anymore. Have it. I deny. why it's all the more important for Dubu to get these pulls off. That was an interesting pull. He actually pulled a straight up tree cut down. Oh yeah, I have seen a couple of teams do this. I guess it's it's just what less likely to be interrupted by the offlaner. Yep. It's also like a new path you can open up in case you get in trouble. A, a lot of supports are actually saved by this path that's opened up. And they get died or oh, dove on. Hey, has he ever gone the uh, the old like really fast solar crest build? Anything like that? MSS continue to try and shove Dubu away from him. Get some of that precious precious CS, but you could see QO is challenging MSS every single time. I think it's actually pretty significant. Oh, MSS is going to get out of here. I think the biggest thing that people have realized is that every safe lane carry, you know, melee carry, is, is going to pick up that poor man's shield. And if you have a PMS, unless you have phase boots, you're not going to do much damage. And that's kind of what the Orb of Venom provides. It makes up for that, that poor man's shield block, right? So even if you... Yeah, so it's 12 I, I, damage I every so. hit. But I, think uh, I do good. think... I think the what it, what the progression was is that the safe lane carries picked it up. Like, heroes like Animage would pick up an, an early Orb of Venom, and it was so effective against these offlaners. And we start running some of these, these ranged offlaners, Fury Gun really starts coming into vogue, and you, you see the advantage of how just a small movement speed change really add to you. And... It, it may be a very small amount for a range hero, but a range hero takes advantage of a movement speed difference so much more, right? And when the whole entire idea of a range hero is purely harassment, I mean, like, that, that's the point of it, right? It's like you're running an H's Prophet to harass the safe laner out. So you've got to make the oh, most of that lane. situation. MP almost going to be blown up. Oh, there's the Crib Swarm. Just enough to be able to finish him off. And Febby cannot do anything to stop it. They even had MSS ready to go for the TP. We've talked about this in the draft, that this mid lane is going to be pretty tough for a more. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he's the, uh, <laughs> you know, you know, he's, uh, in, like a prison break. You gotta, you gotta hold the pocket. Boom, Bulba does. <laughs> yep. He'll still be able to get. I didn't get clipped by the bugs. You. Amen. Got a shrine up. Looks like. So yeah. you, you've seen a lot of Monkey Kings. Yeah, because I've been seeing them all over, all over NA pubs. And I, I feel like this hero is surprisingly strong at just farming and farming and becoming like kind of a late game carry.
Don't worry, I, I got it. TP in. The bugs plus the Furion. Uh, it's just... They've got actually so many minus armor options for... Ethan, what, what do we do for Immortals? How do we change this game? Uh, it's like Grant said, Monkey King is incredibly strong when it comes to these mid-game team fights because the the other strong thing that you know he has going for him, apart from that super powerful ulti, is that while he is a carry, you know, Boundless Strike is always a great way to start off a fight too. You know, he, that Boundless Strike stuns for 1.6 seconds, and that thing has some serious range on it. It's a fissure. MP goes down. Abed does have to deal with Febby though, but it looks like he's going to be chased away. Bulba doesn't actually have mana for a stun, so he can't stop the Monkey King from just coming in and slamming on Abed. So they will be able to trade mid for mid for some rotations, though. But at the same time, Exorcism. Double damage. A big rotation for Immortals not having to worry about that. And I think, like, is there anything they're going to be waiting for for Immortals? <laughs> oh, QO. QO. He throws out the ultimate. He knows he needs that extra armor to be able to survive, and he does. He gets the lifesteal off on MSS, unable to finish off and get the double kill. Magic damage coming out from Oracle just too much. Uh, another one of your favorite things about Oracle, right? Dyer's top tower is under attack. Hey. Even smaller, Dyer's like, magic damage supports that don't do that much nuke damage probably still would have been Monkey King's wiping through people. Mason's going to try and get the rebuttal, though, with MSS. They didn't manage to get bugs on him, but QO is going to be stuck inside the trees. Slam by Bulba. Counter kill with Abed. Goes in pretty fast on Dubu, too. They are definitely going to just shove down this tower. Bulba tries to catch... The Dyer's top tower is under attack. Radiant's bottom tower has fallen. This is uh, definitely Monkey King's biggest weakness, though. If you have a bad start, it is actually so difficult to catch up because you are very, very vulnerable to pretty much any type of damage. I'm... Wukong's command is actually, while it is insanely powerful, it does take some time to, to get out. And, I mean, if he just gets jumped on by pretty much anyone and he's behind, it's going to be a kill. <laughs> you know, I... Yeah. QO is going to be run down. He does have the life steal though, but he doesn't have his stun, so he can't get out the big burst of damage. Just heals up a little bit and starts backing up with that bug. Meanwhile, bottom lane is being pressured pretty heavily by Ferev, who's now level 8. One hero that's kind of gone unnoticed. Bloodseeker's been spending so much time in the jungle, it's been Ferev who's kind of speeding along in the net worth chart, currently just behind the Weaver, but far behind our top net worth, Abed, sitting at almost 5k at 10 minutes. Highest net worth for Immortals is about to die. Now, he does have a rotation coming in if he could just survive long enough for his team to maybe pick up one or two kills, but die so quickly. QO. Oh, they want to go on MSS. Slam and jam. They're going to be able to catch him too. Void. Oh, uh, they'll still get him for sure, but played a little bit by the successful Sprout and Immortals trade. Necessary. I'm not a fan either. I prefer the Echo Saber. 
I think it's good enough to help him farm, and it just makes you that much stronger in the team fights earlier. You really can get picked off here. I, I actually think it's necessary for this game, just because Immortals is, like, they, their laning phase is so ruined that I, I really don't think that they're going to be able to contest some of these five band pushes. I mean, just look how much physical damage they're able to lay out into this Roshan so quick. Radiant's bottom tower is under attack. But maybe they were going to get another uh, Roshan steal. I don't think they're going to be wanting to fight, though, for quite some time, and I think that's going to mean that DC in the end are going to get more in exchange with his Aegis uh, over the course of the next five minutes. He's going to be in some big trouble here with Furion teeping it as well. I mean, if Furion's not necessary, they don't even need this fourth man on the field that they can always bring to this fight. It's just like when they dove mid. It's not even necessary have too much damage. Debbie standing. He has to spend so much time off the map. Again, I think that's where the, the Midas comes back have to be able to, to make do for this mid game and kind of grind through it and not get caught and Midas is a lot better for allowing you to be, to be play safe. Yeah, I definitely agree with that. I think if the laning was, you know, normal and it was even, he probably should have went for a fighting item, but I mean, they're they're struggling a bit right now. Their lineup is definitely not meant to, to be losing part of the game. But to be honest, neither is his digital chaos. And I, I think that's the thing. Like, I, I've heard this time and time again. Like, teams know what they should be doing against MVP fans. They know they should be shoring up their laning phase and just picking heroes that can fight because they know Immortals is going to them. I feel like Immortals is kind of leveled up in that sense, though. They are kind of holding back on that those kind of engagements you know they they actually just go into farming and they're patient or more patient now We're seeing a lot of times that uh, Immortals are picking and choosing their timings for fights. I mean, right now, you could see how, just how spread out they are. Like, Febby, twice in a row now, right? We saw Steven, uh, Febby farming up jungle with his four position. A lot of times, just trying to grind whatever gold he can. They're not looking for fights. They're just looking for ways to farm that aren't near digital. It's been a couple of minutes, and they're still retaining their gold lead, so... I mean, I think overall, Immortals should be pretty happy with what they've accomplished. Radiant are scanning. Definitely uh, pretty impressive. Especially considering how easy their heroes are to kill. Monkey, King, Pug, Bloodseeker. They're, those are all heroes that are just easily bursted down. But... Uh, I do know what you're saying as a, as a theory, just because you're right. Because NP is out of experience range for so much of the gold. Doom is going to be caught here. But, I mean, this is due, right? Like, Immortals are going to be losing heroes. In fact, they're going to go for a kill that no one really expects. Diving a tier 3 tower. Give up on that. 
pretty quick. All right. He wants the most EXP. This is true. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. <laughs> the EHP of a Midas. Okay, explain. Effective health pool. Out of curiosity, so, so how did 12, you arrive 12 at that? HP points? That's all you're missing out on from not using your Midas? Are we talking like per second? Like is it 12 HP per second or... <laughs> <laughs> Alright, you can't argue with you're science. You're in NA? Since when? <laughs> I feel you. I feel you. <laughs> After all, I know <laughs> HP points is definitely an, uh, an American metric. I don't know what they use over there in Europe. Maybe you could enlighten us, Stephen, with your passing of Europe. After this 5v5. Oh, okay, well, that's a bad start to the 5v5. QO just straight up misses the boundless strike and doesn't have it for another 15 seconds. The exorcism already out. Fortunately, QO didn't have his trees knocked out from underneath. MSS. They are chipping away at some of these trees, but this tier one tower is definitely going to be going down without immortals contesting. Probably going to be able to hold on to their tier. I like this though. The exorcism is down, right? So they go for the five man push out real quickly. See if they can force the fight, because they can't touch fights forever. Just blinks away. Great play from Baldwin, stopping them in their tracks. I mean, Immortals. They wanted to make a play. They they waited for this moment. No Aegis, but I think DC understand that as well. Gonna be hiding away now, making sure they take better engagements. He's actually gonna be making his way towards the Monkey King. He thinks that just him and the Furion would be enough to be able to take the monkey down, but they give up on that tree. Backs himself away. It is getting closer and closer to his Desolator. One of those big, big upgrades. I mean, the thing is, it sounds impressive, but with 20 armor, he still technically has zero if he gets focused down because Corrosive Haze is going to remove 10, and MSS does have that Solar Crest, so I mean, that's minus 20, and we're not even throwing in the Weaver bugs. I mean, I'm pretty sure if you want to focus probably, someone Probably, if you're in the Monkey King Ultimate, you probably got it. All right, there's the Desolator, but Digital Chaos will get Aegis. Jesus. <laughs> Who needs a clown? I do, I do like the points that you were making, though, about the higher levels. Man, I think the levels are incredibly important. He's got that level 15 talent, where if you're behind in a game like this, the, the HP is so important. Febby's going to be caught trying to fly his way to the shrine. Actually gets a four staff from MP. He's going to be good for now. QO 
Is he going to drop that ultimate? No, he actually gets silence. And now with the Amplify damage on him, Bulba, ready to follow up with a crush, is going to be able to catch him plus more. Uh, maybe not. He's actually going to be uh, chased away by MP. They get a silence on him, Mason. But Febby dropping lower and lower, does have flying up. Not going to be able to use it just yet, though. Oh, nice ice path from Dubu. They're going to go straight for MSS, but still can't make the full committal just because these heroes are too damn low. Febby toying with Mason as he flies over a Mason, not willing to make that commitment for the kill. He values his life a little bit more. Simple pickoff for Digital Chaos on the Monkey King. Nothing more, really. Really unfortunate. All they wanted to do was save Febby, and they do end up losing the Monkey King in return. And it's like, I think every kill on QO is like that much bigger for, for DC because he's pretty much like the, the centerpiece of their team fight. For the twins. Yeah, well. That's actually the first time I met Febby. We were in the same Warcraft 3 clan. No, 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 not a land, but we played on in the same clan. Radiance Courier has been killed. That way he dresses up. Dyer's middle hand is under attack. <laughs> <laughs> I want to see Granny Grant. <laughs> I, uh... Bulba looking for his opportunity. Does get ruptured. Blown up by Fareb. Nice two-man silence, though. Mason trying Ooh, to follow Abed. that one up, but with Abed in trouble. He does have the cheese, though, and they're going to be able to get the Oracle save out on him as well. And QO stuck inside his own ultimate. is going to be gobbled up by Abed. Well, Mason gets the back lines as well. And you pick up the Pugna. Mason drops a little bit low, but he does have the Aegis. And Immortals realize this is just not a fight they can really win. Trade blow for blow, but they'll never be able to overwhelm Digital Chaos with the Aegis and Cheat. Pretty funny to see the uh, the crep combo on Slargars, especially since they're usually sprinting. The damage amplification is just so ridiculous. Necessity against Bloodseed. I think that's the the biggest reason. Otherwise, it's, it's kind of whatever. MSS tries to cut down the trees. Is able to with to get away. Really needs that BKB. Really needs the Radiance on MP. Well, this is beginning to become a little bit of a time game where Digital Chaos are closing off more and more of the map faster and faster, and mortals have to find a way to finish their items before they get completely shut out. Dyer's structures are fortified. It just looks so difficult because I just keep looking at Kyo's Monkey King and he's just got phase boots and deso. It's just so hard for him to fight with this. He's done. He was doing so well with that Aghanim Scepter. I mean, the fact that he even got it was impressive. And then run around with the gem finally and start taking down Vision. But losing it, not. And that's after picking.
Dyer's middle tower is under attack. For I, I feel like it's just on the fly. There's just too much going on in these team fights, and I mean, Death Prophet probably not even your priority. If he has his ulti going, it's gonna do damage to you anyways. Uh, maybe try to protect your carries instead with it. You hope that you can catch a Weaver who's trying to get in, as well as uh, a Slaughter who wants to get in. I feel like most of his job is more on the fact that he's just got to find a way to... Oh no, the oh, old Scepter well. on the Monkey King right before he could jump away, but they do have defensive force to ask. Uh, maybe they have one for Dubu, or not. Dubu's going to be the one caught out here. Pretty decent silence from Abed too. QO's in some serious trouble. They're trying to finish him off with a Desolator proc, but Mason doesn't quite have enough damage to get him. Nether Ward also kind of keeping them at bay. The crap of fine, buying a little bit of time for that little itty bitty ward. Another pick off for them. Back themselves. I think that the Jakiro's just got to be the, the guy who stops some of these pushes and, and honestly gets. I think sometimes he's got to be the one who pushes out waves simply because it doesn't matter too much if he gets. At least he's the, the person that matters to the league. They need like mass four staff pushes on Death Prophet. I think the only way they're going to win these team fights is that they somehow manage to start an engagement with Moon going down first. Like you can't. I don't think you can let this Oracle cast spells. Dyer's bottom tower is Oaken and Bulba. Tower. Of the darkness there. And all the vision in the world doesn't change. The fact that you can't really go on these heroes. They're trying to catch the Monkey King right now using both Fizz and Sprout. Scouting through the tree. Six. No, Man, it's, I bet it's, it's not that low, four. is it? Ah, uh, it's fine. Yeah, I remember like the absurdity of it because it was as much as, uh, it, it, yeah, it was less than an ultimate orb, but it gave you the same stats. Who? <laughs> you the cat. Oh, they're gonna smoke up. I think they feel like the DC's a bit split. Well, they're right. Oh, this is going to be a huge pickoff if they manage to find Mason. They see Mason, take away his Lincolns, do manage to get the silence onto him, plus the ice path, but can they actually blow him up before he manages to get off his ultimate? They do get him. Big time kill. Plus Moon Meander, it looks like, but Digital Chaos are kind of forming. No, 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 they're all out. They're going to leave Moon Meander to death. Almost catching the Furion with that ice path, though. And he didn't immediately, like, pop the ultimate once his Lincolns got hit. Go ahead. It's going to get a bit of damage. Damage Gold remains. <laughs> Every single time I see a situation where teams against Mega Creeps and they keep on uh, keeping their tier 4 towers alive for like impossibly long stretches, all I think about you is, is you, Grant. That's all I think about. Oh, Dubu. <laughs> Dubu? Not gonna get caught. All right, oh, Immortals are gonna take their first tower since like 15 minutes when they were going ham through mid and bottom. They managed to bring it back. It's dead even again in terms of net worth. Radiant's top tower is under attack. 
Radiance they see the Furion. Mason now sees fit. And manages to get bugs onto Ferev as well. Now QO is still going to go straight for MSS. Does manage to get off the Jingu. The sounds goes down onto Mason. They brought Bulba pretty low as well. QO is forced back to Fury and is going to try and join the rest of his team now. Throwing down the ultimate. Protecting this area from Abed, who's going to run through it and try and go for the rest of the team. But they've got the silence out. QO is actually just leaving the rest of his team. And Immortals is going to run away from Abed. They think this is a fight that they just do not want to take against that Death Prophet, and they're probably right. Mortals have forced out an Exorcism and lost very little for it. Tome of Knowledge drop. Looks like QO is going to be the one picking it up, and I think they just heal up and go again. I mean, this is a, a big bait. Yeah, they're going to smoke up. Invisibility. This will come in handy. MSS just TP'd into top lane. Oh, oh miss. a misboundless strike. I'm sure that they're still going to catch him, right? They're going to be able to get the jump on and the silence. Make sure that Oracle is not going to TP in. DC's just letting themselves get caught. What a beautiful ice path. Catches Bulba as he tries to jump in with a boundless strike combo. Mason. Oh, Mason's actually in trouble. He almost dies in that one. Does manage to get off his ultimate, but he's going to eat through the Night Stalker oh, in the back lines, though. QO fights up against Abed, but they manage to get the Oracle save off. He's got the Aegis, though. MP. He's going straight for MSS, especially with the Death Prophet so low. He's so fast. He eats the cheese, goes for that oh, last bit of damage, boy. but he's disarmed by Moon Meander, and he'll die underneath the tower. MP goes too deep, while Immortals, they didn't manage to get the, the Weaver, right? Mason got that kill and got out. And more importantly, he got the gem back. Oh, wow. It did look a little weird, but I think that was due to the fact that there were so many heroes that were low that he just ran so fast. Yeah. For me, this. it just feels like they're a little too conservative. But that's really all it comes down to. And and then once they lost control of the map, I feel like they weren't conservative enough. You know, like you you had to just hole up in your base at that point. Try and wrap. They were looking for QO. In fact, they're even throwing out. Oh no! The oh, come on, <laughs> come on, man. Now the chase. They've got the they've got the vision on MSS. They're going to be able to spot him out. Gets the void. There's the stun from Bulba. But a nice, a nice ice path, path again. once again. But a better silence from Abed. Abed's going to be in some serious trouble. The Oracle immediately throws the ultimate down on him. But he's ruptured. Surrounded by Monkey King ultimate. Getting sucked on deliciously by Fareb. Abed is definitely dead. So it's up to Mason now to carry through this fight. But he can't get anywhere near that Monkey King ultimate. He's got to get chased away. Silenced up. They've got vision of him too. They're just trying to kite him around. What's our Bloodseeker up to? Alongside Fred, they're trying to chase down Bulba with the Radiance. He's not going to be able to blink out of that one. Will eventually die. Mason away into the tree, spotted out by QO. Managed to spot him and brings him down with a balance strike and two right clicks. That's five down from Digital Chaos and Immortals. Looks like they're going to be able to take the first racks of this game, if not two. Yeah, he's finally reached that stage where he is... You just cannot ignore this Monkey King in these team fights. He just does way too much damage, and... I, I just... I honestly can't believe Immortals are in this position again. Bulba does manage to get the two months stun out, but now Rupture with a silence coming in as well. MP doesn't want to give up his life for a Slardar, though. 
Immortals should be very happy with what they accomplished. One lane of racks down bottom. They're going to catch MSS actually trying to sneak in and take the tier three and the melee racks, but unsuccessful. Ends up going down. I don't know, Steven, what do you do? <laughs> I mean, the, the thing is, like, this this game just got even like that much harder when they kind of threw away their lead and they're against a Night Stalker. So you can't even hope for the perfect initiation, right? Like, even though Boba has a Blink Dagger, it's just so hard for him to find the right target. I think if they're going to hope for a chance to win this game, they are going to have to uh, hope for the dream smoke play. Oh, he's got a Scotty now too. Radiance top shrub is under attack. <laughs> and Bulba trying to protect the ward doesn't go too. Dyer's bottom shrine. That was a good analogy, Grant. I like that. Radiance top tower is under attack. Dyer's bottom uh, is under attack. I think it's it's actually one of the best late game heroes in the game. It's like silly as that sounds when you contrast it with what Monkey King used to be, which was this the best four position in the world, you know? And the fact that this hero now is just turning into a big carry is... Look at him. Just going Holy straight shit, for Abed. Rupture in. and Silence is going to be going out. QO does not have an agent, so he's going to try and throw out his ultimate to try and dodge some of this physical damage because he's got forever. The back line's just... Oh, giving it to him. Good. Look at the heal go. QO is not dead. I was just about to say he's going to die to the Death Prophet, but not even that. They can't get a single kill on it. That was... Sick play by 4M.